Hey, Don here. We are uh, gonna adjust this a little bit, I think. Okay, when I when I touch it to get the recording going, it moves a little bit. Okay, um, this is my Kepersky Kapersky Rescue Disc Virus Scan on my Dell 1525 laptop. It's finished. It's uh, said I was in there that it completed 12 hours ago which is more than that because I've been sitting here probably an hour getting things getting my all computers all booted up and getting this set up the camera in the right, the phone camera in the right place and uh, so let's see what it found or didn't find after this this is I'm pretty sure it's about the seventh uh, rescue application, or well, just virus scanner I've used. Two of them were um, Clam AV, which is on my Linux. This is a Windows 7 on a Dell 1525 laptop. But it also it's a dual boot system, has uh, Fedora 21 and and Windows 7. So I have Clam AV uh, in the Fedora 21, and I scanned it with that. It deleted some stuff. It's always finding Trojans. It's, it's stuff. It's stuff that's just wormed its way through this thing. Don't know where it started from or anything. Uh, and uh, anyway, I kept scanning it. Sometimes you can scan it enough times you'll find different with different scanners. You'll finally get them to quit coming up with anything. But uh, I'm about to give up on this one and probably just reformat the. Uh, the whole system. I need to update the Fedora to like 20. It's 24 is out. Just came out and need to update it anyway. So I just hated to uh, blow the whole Windows. It takes much longer just to get all your applications that you want and install and get everything set up in Windows than it does in Linux. So because I have I have uh, app install scripts that I can run to install my, my Fedora apps that I want, but. Uh, I don't have anything like that for Windows, so. Oh, well, I have something like that. There's a, what's it called? There's an online thing where it'll actually build you an install script and you can run it. I just don't know how to do that in Windows. Um, so, uh, I wish I, I should, if I'd used Windows more often, I might try to learn it, but I don't use it that much. Okay, there's nothing in quarantine. So, let's see. Detective threat zero status. No threats detected. It's the first time since all this that I've had this had it come up with nothing detected. That VBA rescue was the last one I ran, and it uh, it found eight more that infected files, and, and I had it. You know, I let it. I set it to just automatically quarantine them, uh, and. Uh, So maybe wouldn't that be something? Well, if it ran, the thing is, it, uh, why I keep on scanning it is because uh, I want to use it for for messing with my phones. There's a little app called My Phone Explorer that you can control your phone and see your phone's phone screen and uh, you know up on your monitor in like six six or eight inches in size, big enough, bigger bigger than that really. It depends on the monitor you're using. Big enough to read it. <coughs> And uh, plus, it's a lot easier to can, you top you top on the keyboard and everything. So uh, it has an Android app that's the server, and then the, the client. It's only a Windows client. I wish it was Linux, and I could just do it in my Linux system. But anyway, that's what got me to messing with these Windows systems lately. And uh, then I ran into all kinds of trouble. So um, report well, zero viruses, Trojans, malicious, anything. It's all showed. What's this? Other program two. Adware and other programs. Yeah. Known software. Okay. I wonder if it would tell you what those are. A detailed report. It says it was completed 13 hours ago. I, I, I let it. It wasn't quite done when I was ready to go to bed, so I went ahead and let it run all night. So it probably didn't run but another hour or so, and then it was done, but I was asleep, of course. So. 
Yeah, I think that's telling you when. Yeah, it started at 8.49 p.m. And completed at 12.22 a.m. Oh, yeah, well, I went to bed at 7. So, no, it was a lot longer than an hour after I finished. Okay, so it was a good thing I let it, just went to bed. And I thought it was almost finished at one point, but it said, uh, you know, nine, ten minutes, nine minutes till done. But I, then it, I went off in the other room and came back, and it said, uh, three minutes till done or something or five or whatever and I was like what well that must be counting files or directories instead of the whole overall scan so I was like what the heck so uh, object scan do not group important events critical events all events okay now there's everything uh, See, go ahead and make it big enough to see it all, or at least most of it. It's just uh, talking about compressed, you know, compressed files, zip files, packed. Because I set it to scan all compressed files. I mean, if you don't do that, you're not going to find you, your problems. A lot of them tend to skip that by default, and that's why I always get in there and set to scan all all files and all compressed files. And if the program will do it, I'll scan the uh, um, boot sectors and everything. So, and all, and all uh, like on Windows, you know, 7 especially has those system they're hidden to the no user, but there's a system partition on all that you have to put on all Windows 7. And what I had done was I made a PAT 32 partition and made it 20 gigs so I, and made it viewable, uh, viewable by the user. And I used it to install Windows 7, and then I also used it as a backup. And it could also repair Windows 7 if it was broken. Uh, but oh, I think I sidetracked. I was saying there is a file. What got me back to what got me going after this thing with a vengeance trying to clean it up there's a file uh, svchost.exe that is using sitting there running using 50% of the processing power uh, you know, Core 2 is not something fancy but you know new and hot but it's still decent 50% uh, of two cores both cores um, means 202 gigahertz and it has three gig of memory and normally it runs you know pretty well and do most anything I want to do I've tried it uh, rendering videos and it I mean it does it just fine but it takes just as long as anything else it's kind of funny when you render videos uh, my P4 will do it about the same uh, with two gig of memory it'll do it in about the same it's good uh, if you're doing an hour long video it's going to take three to five hours depending on how many cuts and effects and repairs and things you know like audio fixes and things you put in there but uh, it'll do it in about the, and so all, all these machines the, the only one that seems uh, the core twos do have a dual core AMD I haven't done any videos on it but it's only got two gig of RAM and it's so it's not too too peppy so uh, if it had more RAM it might be alright but anyway uh, I have quite the newest thing I have now is a quad core Lenovo i5 quad core with four gig of RAM and I did one video, I think it was about a 30 minute video, and it surprised me, it was quite a bit faster. Of course it was uh, only 30 minutes, but it was quite a bit faster than I expected. I can't remember how long it took. I don't know if it's 30 minutes, an hour, or what, 20 minutes? I really don't remember, I just remember going, wow, that was a lot faster. But I haven't done any longer videos yet. So, uh, okay, so I don't see anything, anything that's kind of really helpful to me it's just saying packed EPX I don't see it saying anything look suspicious or anything because there's so many I don't really want to read every one of them I went through all that log file on BBA rescue until I got to until I realized that the thing was like miles long and so I skipped through down to the bottom but it's a diff this, see, this is what I had been talking about it in the VBA rescue it, uh, these log files here in this Kepersky Kapersky um, 
is not near as detailed. I'm going to save it just for the heck of it. Oh, where am I going to save it though? I don't have anything mounted to save it to. Uh, if I save it in root, that'll, that's a live directory that'll disappear when I shut this down. So, okay, I'm going to close that. <coughs> anyway, main thing is it does not show any uh, anything infected. Just uh, I, I know that some of this Windows freeware that I have, you know, has ads in it. That's how they how they try to make some money, you know. Or some of them are more intrusive, and some of them will, well, you know how it is. Some of them will even, there actually really are malware. They crawl into your system and jack, start popping up pop-ups and all that kind of junk. These, these aren't programs that do stuff like that. So, <coughs> <coughs> so let me get a drink. <clears throat> so, yeah, and the whole, I, I go in in circles. I just woke up. Um, had breakfast, though. But, um. It, um, let's see, quarantine was empty. Yeah, right there. And I'll click on all, it doesn't make any difference. Um, <coughs> that, uh, SVC host.exe, it's all, when, anytime you, it'll be hang, it's, it's basically seems to be hung up what it says in the, System monitor, uh, it's hot waiting on another SVC host. And there's a bunch of them in Windows 7, and they all depend on each other. And I've killed it two or three times, it didn't make any difference. It didn't uh, actually, it got a little better for a minute, and then it started doing it again. So I thought, well, this is not really a normal behavior, you know, I've never seen it before in any, any of the Windows 7 systems I have. So I hadn't really recently installed anything myself or anything, it been quite a while since I'd installed anything so I figured it was malware you know and then I found all these Trojans and stuff mostly all Trojan so uh, I'm sure they were doing it now whether or not I can get them all out of there I, I was get, becoming complete really doubtful that I would ever get them out and I was just gonna have to reformat but I'm gonna reboot it and see um, if it's still doing that uh, since I've got finally got a, cl a, a clean re report, I'll go ahead and do that. And I had really just given up. So, uh, update center, yeah. Updated seven hours ago. That right there takes you to the quarantine, oddly enough. I knew that that big old button ought to do, looked like a button that ought to do something. But, uh, no threats and report. Okay, well, it takes you to all, where you can get to all of it. Okay. Status, no threat. Okay. Report. Okay. Wait a minute, what does that say? Viruses, Trojans. Oh, there's a two out there to the side. But there's a big... Now, what the heck is that supposed to mean? It's a big zero, and then there's a two off to the side of that. Malicious tool, there's a one. And... Adware and other programs. Okay, I guess that's what it means. I'm gonna guess. That's really not self-explanatory, is it? I hadn't really know, don't remember that from before. Um, I used to use this uh, quite a bit, doing it like when I would clean up other people's systems. And uh, it is easy to use and seems to be pretty thorough. Um, of course, I always use at least minimum of three different scanners. Usually, a vast is, I ha is on. If the system I set up or having or, or had anything to do with it all, I, it's usually going to have a vast on there because I like a vast and uh, can do a boot to time scan with it, which I did. And, but still, even like that, it's running out of, out of DOS, so that's still part of your system. You know, it's still running off your system. And a vast now has a, a way you can make a, a boot. CD, USB, whatever you want, um, and I've done that once or twice, but you have to make it every time you do it, instead of you, you making one and then just updating the definitions, you have to make it that day, well the thing is, you better, you need a clean Windows system to make it from, first off, and the other thing is, it's, you know, it takes, you got to download the uh, ISO, then burn your CD or DVD or USB, and these other ones, you can put them on a USB, and they'll still work until they the program part of it gets too old, and 
you know, because it not it's not just the virus definitions, but the entire program has to all work together. So, and there, but this rescue disc ten is, it seems to still work well, but it is fairly three or four years old now. They haven't, as far as I, I have not seen an update to uh, Kepler Sky Rescue Disc for quite a while. So that's another reason why I started uh, using some of the others I found in Sardu and Yummy. Uh, those are multi boot builder apps that you can, you can use in Windows to build uh, multi boot Linux setups, you know, live systems. <coughs> but, uh, so, okay, so I, I'm gathering that they are two things, but they're, uh, one's a other. And the other says, uh, it's hard to tell. There's no line across there. Okay. Zero. Other. Known software. Okay, well, it's, I, I can't see that. I can, my eyes just can't really do that. But I can't tell what row it's on. But um, at any rate, there's nothing that was shown up as deleted or uh, that it was bad and really bad and had to be deleted or fi tried to fix or anything okay so <clears throat> I think um, it's rather than making the, this one into a really long video I will uh, stop here and then I'll start a new video on, on reboot the system so I'm just going to shut it down take out my let's go ahead and shut it down Take out my little uh, SD card so that I can boot back into. Yes, I really want to show that. So I can boot back into. Uh... Nope, now I can see me again. That screen reflects. It's like a mirror, dark mirror. So, um, you get to see the. You probably might be able to read it. This phone is not. You know, it's only. It's called a five megapixel camera, but actually in video I discovered from the Open Camera the app that I use. I'm use uh, I discovered and I'm using. It tells you uh, exactly what what you're getting out of it, and it's 2.07 megapixels. And I played with the settings a lot, trying to get the best I could get, but my file size just got too big. But I'm doing 30 frames per second and 10 megabits. I, I keep saying it wrong. Uh, and there's my little my my SD card, my 32 gigabyte SD card and uh, a USB adapter. That's come in really handy. The, the adapter actually came with 64 megabit um, SD cards that I bought for my phones. I actually originally bought this for my phone, but I filled it up with videos so quick that if you can. I don't think you can read it. Doesn't look to me like it. It's hard to tell with that little bitty screen what's what can be read and what can't. But uh, <clears throat> it's. A, I mean, the card itself has worked great. Nothing wrong with it. This is the one that the adapter came with. It also has a full size SD card adapter and uh, Nitro 64 gig. But those are in my phones. I'm recording on the one I'm right now. <clears throat> so. Uh, Anyway, with the uh, megabits and uh, megapixels, I'm always saying it wrong, but anyway, maybe you know what I mean. All right, uh, this is Don, and uh, I'm going to sign out for this video, and then I'll come back on the Windows 7 boot and see what's going on.